Hello and welcome. Uh, I get a lot of questions and emails from people wanting to learn NS3. And they say, I'm totally new to NS3, blah, blah, blah. And so here are some advices I can give to people starting with NS3 that I hope will help you with your, you know, running your simulation uh, in NS3. Uh, the first tip is you need to be good at C++. You want to know how to program in C++. You want to understand concepts such as class and object and struct, right? Because that's how the object-oriented part of it works. If you know how to create classes, you can create your custom types, you can extend features, you could do a lot with that. You can also identify the limitations of the code NS3 code, right? Uh, for example, what is a virtual function? You know, if you have inheritance and how the dynamic binding, late binding or static binding happens. So learn C++, make sure you know your C++ code. And um, part of that is learning the debugger because you need to know how when you have a runtime error, you wanna go back to something like GDB and run your program in a debugger and I have a video of how to use a debugger with the NS3. And if you know how to use a debugger, like GDB, uh, you know how to find your runtime errors because you know the C++ compiler isn't as nice as Java or Python where it can tell you the line that causes the problem or gives you the stack trace right away, right? Okay, so Tip number one, C++ coding. Tip number two, learn how to read the doxygen, the doxygen, yeah, the documentation, basically. So uh, there's a tool called doxygen that you don't have to use, but the developers of NS3 uh, documented their code and documented NS3, and they have a doxygen library where they basically, uh, not a library, sorry, documentation, which is basically pages of HTML that you can browse and you could see what trace sources are available and you could basically go to the NS3 website or you can build them on your local machine by I think using WAF Doxy or WAF Doxygen, one of these options. And then you can build the documentation and have them locally. It takes a lot of time, it may take half an hour or so to build a normal computer. But then I'd use Doxygen because that's where I always go look for things. There are their trace sources that does that. I go look at Doxygen because they have all the trace sources listed together in one page by the class name. And so you can do that. That is tip number two. What is tip number three? Start with the tutorials. Now you got Tutorial examples, so under slash example tutorials, you want to run the simplest of the simplest tutorial. You want to run two computers sending a single message and then celebrate, right? And then you move from there. You can create more complex examples. And, and uh, the way NS3 basically, you'll get the feel of how NS3 does that, um, uh, basically build the networks. You got a node and you got, um, links and channels and all of that and applications and devices. And so you start with a simple example with this bucket, two computers or two LANs. And I have examples like that or a single Wi-Fi, and then do that. A lot of people ask me, well, I want to extend and add this. I was like, well, that will take a lot of work. You need to uh, follow the next tip. What is the next tip? Number four, you need to understand, you want to understand how NS3 does things, right? So NS3 has this thing called trace sources where you provide a string path and basically you can access anything from pretty much anything. So basically uh, you can have an, an access to all the nodes because every node created is in a global list of nodes and you can basically have a slash node sl slash star which is called the path config uh, that uh, connect, you connect to trace sources or maybe you connect to attributes to basically get them or set them, some of them, you can do that. 
but learn how to use that. It's not actually the most uh, uh, brilliant way to do it. So if you're creating a project like NS3, this is, not, this is not how you should do it, but they did it that way. So learn how to work with what they did, right? The problem with the way they're doing it is that they are, the checking for the string is done at, uh, it's not done at compile time because that's how it works. You have to provide a value, a string, and then the string is passed in runtime and then an error happens. Uh, you wanna, you want things where you compile something and then if it doesn't compile, you could see your error right away before you even run it. That's actually part of uh, how you can reduce the burden of software, the software development process. I actually was part of a course. Uh, uh, basically, you wanna detect errors as, as early as possible, right? Detecting error in runtime is more expensive than detecting errors in compile, ta compile time and detecting error after deployment is costly. That's why they have patches, right? You know, you deployed it to the customers, you sold your software or video game or whatever you're developing, and then there's a problem, so you have to pa provide a patch. So what was that, number four? Because we, um, so yeah, you need to learn how to NS3 does things. And um, the problem is if you try to connect, config connect and it doesn't work, it doesn't give you an error unless you match the, um, uh, unless you don't have the proper, uh, what you call it, uh, callback function, which is, which is kind of ugly, but it is what it is. And you, you know, you deal with what you have, right? Uh, you know, there are other simulators that does things a little differently than NS3. I mean, I worked briefly with Omnit and it's a little messy where you have the, schedule an event to yourself and then execute that event. And it's, it's weird how they scheduled the event with the Omnit, but I, I didn't go deep into that, but uh, yeah. And uh, finally, yeah, practice and write code and ask question. That's how you get to learn it. And, and so if you're new, you really have to spend some time on it, right? I'm learning something new on my nice fancy computer here has nothing to do with computer networks or uh, my PhD uh, work. In my free time, I'm learning how to do game development, right? I know how to program in C++ and Sharp, C Sharp. Uh, I'm learning how to use uh, something called the Unreal Engine, which is for game development. And it takes, there is a lot to learn there, like how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, how to do that. And when someone wants to teach you something, uh, they, uh, they will say things that you have never heard of and you're not familiar with. So they're jumping ahead because they don't know your, your level, right? So you know your own level. So you should know how to practice with simple problems and then go bigger from there, right? And so try to do that. Try to break your problem into smaller problems and small, and then you can get where you want to be. All right, that's a quick video, but j just the response to some of the question about I'm new to NS3, what should I do? I think I covered what I wanted to cover. I mean, good luck. If you have questions, ask in the user, um, uh, what is it called? The user group in Google, yeah, email me. Uh, some of you have my email, but you could, you could reply to one of my uh, responses to NS3. I work with VANet. Uh, vehicular networks, and I work with uh, which is basically Wave, so I could help with that if I could. So I'm doing some work with cooperative adaptive cruise control. Anyway, <coughs> I gotta go. I uh, hope you find this useful. Uh, if you're new to industry, good luck, and uh, yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. Bye bye.